In this video, I'm going to take you through a real-time demo of a badger-faced sheet painting using interactive acrylic. Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Now sheep are one of my favourite subjects to paint and over the years I've painted several breeds in several different styles. But it's only recently that I came across a badger-faced sheep, which apparently is a Welsh breed. And this is a result of me being commissioned by uh, a farmer in the southeast of England via a graphic designer from the same area. And they want me to create a series of illustrations for their website and farm stall. So I'm currently in the process of just doing different thumbnails. Uh, we're still at the very early stages, but um, I was sent some wonderful reference photos to work from. And because I've, you know, never painted one of these badger shaped, badger shaped, <laughs> badger faced sheep before, um, I thought it would be a good exercise to have a go at doing a painting to get to know the subject while I'm waiting for approval on some of these initial designs. So these are just very quick thumbnail sketches I'm showing you at the moment. You can see um, this is a modification of the earlier Highland cattle one. And then we're currently working on combining a sheep and a ram in the same design and having so a couple of the goats together with a little kid in the background. I've got my A2 mixed media paper as usual. And then I've used a watercolour marker with the, uh, the very fine nib to do a quick gestural drawing. And then I've gone over with the same marker. This is a peacock blue watercolour marker by Spectrum Noir. And uh, I've used the thicker brush tip to go back over that drawing and correct it where I see fit. So today um, I'm using interactive acrylic. So I've got my tinting white, ultramarine blue, naphthol crimson, which is a different red to the one I normally use or the couple I normally use. But I thought I'd give that a whirl. Cadmium yellow light and burnt umber. So I'm starting with a big uh, two inch decorator's brush. And what I want to do with this painting is be very aware of the direction of the brush strokes that I use in different parts of the painting. So I'll go into you know, more detail as we go along. But um, the main idea is to have a different style of brushwork for the upper background, different again for kind of the, the middle background, the foreground, and then again for the animal itself. So with that in mind, I want to also create kind of a misty, subdued, subtle coloured background and then a more brightly coloured, vibrant animal. So what I'm doing is just grabbing some of the tinting white and mixing that, that up with a fairly healthy amount of water. I'm going to grab just a little corner of the ultramarine blue, a little corner of the burnt umber, And um, I'm going to put just a little touch of the cad yellow just on the corner of my brush there. OK, so having done that, I'm going to spray the top of the painting with water. That's going to help the first application of paint glide across the surface of the paper. Now, the, the watercolour marker is running quite badly, but I'm not too concerned about that because although this is my second corrected drawing, inverted commas, you know, there are always mistakes that I need to correct. Hopefully they're fairly minor, but, um, you know, nevertheless, they need to be done. Now, what, what I'm doing here is just moving the brush horizontally across the painting from right to left, but I'm putting a little wiggle into the brush strokes as I do that. And having that little burst of yellow on the corner of the brush, it's introduced just a very subtle uh, yellow colour there in the sky. So my next move is to go back to my palette and grab a little bit more white and mix that into what I've already got here. And uh, we'll do the same thing again. 
Now that didn't turn out quite as, li as light as I hoped. But by holding the brush up the other way, previously the yellow corner was at the bottom, now it was at the top, I've kind of enhanced that, that um, yellow streak and I'm quite happy with that, that's okay. Let's um, move that across. Some of the watercolour marker is going to bleed into that background. But uh, the main thing I've done here is keep the paint kind of light and atmospheric and all of my brush strokes, little wiggles aside, have been going from right to left hor and horizontal pretty much. So now we're on to the second region of the background. So I'm going to stick with um, this patch of kind of grey white I've got on the go, but I'll pick up a little bit more of the tinting white so there's a bit more paint on the brush. Again, we'll grab some of the blue. And this time we'll grab a little bit of the naphthol crimson, which uh, this may actually be the first time I've ever used this red. Uh, if any regular viewers of the channel can correct me on that, then uh, please feel free to do so. So I've mixed up kind of a pale violet. And what I'm going to do is also just grab a little corner of blue and a little corner of the red. So I've got a little corner there of red and a little corner of blue at opposite ends of the brush. And again, I'll just mix that in a little bit with the violet I've got going there. We'll keep the surface of the painting moist. Um, and what I'm going to do here is just roll the brush over the over the paper and see what effects we get. And so this is a nice way of creating some wonderful textures. Um, and I haven't found another way of, of creating textures like this, quite or quite like this. Obviously, if you use watercolour, uh, as I sometimes do, then watercolour also creates, you know, amazing textures within the paint, but they're rather different to the ones you can create using this method. And then, so this is meant to be, you know, perhaps some rather unusual foliage or trees off in the background. But what I want to do is have a certain amount of asymmetry in the painting. So having kept things nice and regular with the sky and the background, I'm now going to note the height I've got for this foliage and just drop it down a notch over here on the left. So we'll do something similar. But perhaps we'll just change the way we put the paint on there. So we're not really describing too much, we're just creating a very subtle environment for this animal to occupy. Now for the next stage in the painting, which we could consider the horizontal plane on which the, the sheep is standing, but still off in the distance. But let's grab a little bit of the yellow and mix that in with the patch of paint that I've got on the go. And we'll grab a bit of the blue. And just a touch of the burnt umber. So that burnt umber is going to be my corner colour, if you like. And again, I think the paint, yeah, the paper there is fairly dry. So let's just get a bit of water uh, into the situation. And this time I'm going to just push up against the bristles. So we started off with horizontal brush strokes. Then we went to rolling the brush with the occasional you know, tapping of the brush onto the, onto the paper. And now just working against the bristles, I'm sweeping the brush upwards. Just need to refresh the, the paint a bit there because I, I went back into the purple. I hadn't cleaned my brush out before. Move the water bottle. Now 
Okay, so we've created quite quickly three distinct regions of our painting. Now for the foreground, let's grab you know, a much larger amount of the ultramarine blue compared to previously. We'll grab a reasonable amount of the cad yellow as well. And again, I'm just going to take a little corner color. I'm going to grab some of the tinting white and opposite corner, a little touch of the crimson. And I haven't mixed that paint too thoroughly at all, but it's rather thicker than the paint I've put on before. So let's see what effects we get as we kind of circle the brush here. So this is going to hopefully create uh, a random mixture of color and texture. Let's just get some more paint on my brush so that um, something approximating some undergrowth, perhaps some long grass or you know whatever the plants are, ferns, whatever this animal's wandering through. But with a combination of different colors, a different thickness of paint, and just varying the way I move the brush across the paper, my hope is we're going to, we've, well, hopefully, I think we have created four distinct areas of the painting fairly efficiently. Now, um, it's looking a little bit even in terms of the uh, the level there, which I guess you know may well be quite realistic. You know, uh, things tend to grow to roughly the same height. But let's just lift up this side. We've got a lower level in the background, so we'll just lift up that left side of the painting there. So now it's time to finally work on our sheep. So I've switched to a half inch flat brush, grabbing some of the tinting white again, mixing in a little bit of the cad yellow and a little bit of the naphthol crimson, a little bit of the burnt umber, more of the yellow, Oops, that was a bit, oh, that was way too much yellow. Okay, so let's get loads more white. And there may not be enough white on the palette to get me what I want, but okay. We'll get a little bit, just a touch more red in there. Touch more of the brown, the burnt humper. And okay, that's going to be a reason, it's not ideal, but it's going to be a reasonable base color for the lighter parts of the fleece. Now, once again, I'm going to gently spray the painting with water, but the paint I'm putting down now is going to be much thicker than anything I've put down on the painting so far. So keeping in mind the way the wool is falling around the animal's body without, you know, getting too concerned about any detail. Just going to sweep in some of this pale yellow color and the idea here is to provide uh, an off-white base color onto which I can add shadows or highlights uh, later on. Now although it's completely non-representative of the animal I'm actually quite tempted to leave this bit of watercolor marker here on the back where the where the watercolor markers bled and I, th I think I'm going to do that for now so we'll um, we'll leave that and uh, we'll see if we like it at, towards the end of the painting so I'm still looking at my reference as I as I do this obviously the drawing I've put down so far gives me a certain amount of framework to to work with. I've also got some nice um, 
texture created there by the watercolor marker so i'm going to leave a bit of that showing as well so although i you know I'm, i am as i said referring to the reference i'm not going to be um, you know restricted by it if there's something there that i think is going to work already on the paper then you know i like to go with that kind of um, kind of random event if, it, if i feel it's going to work for the image as a whole now equally these four legs are in you know a certain amount of shadow just from the background i created but they probably could do with you know changing color a little bit from the background and in fact part of this leg is going to be quite dark so we'll leave that for now got another lovely bit of texture here so i'm going to leave some of that showing as well and i'm fairly happy so far with my drawing of i mean it's not an exact replica of the animal in the reference but it's not too bad in terms of the shape of the body the head though i think does need a bit of work so we'll um try and correct that now in fact I'm not so sure it's the head I just think that ear needs to lift up a little bit but uh, let's um let's get the head patched in with this lighter color Now for the darker patches of the animal, before I get into any subtle shadows anywhere else, I'm going to mix up a purple with the, the crimson and a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And um, obviously purple is complementary to yellow, so I'm hoping that this is going to, um, just grabbing some more blue, make for an interesting colour combo. It's difficult to see this purple on the black palette but um, we'll stick with the same brush and I'll use this to start to describe some of the darker parts of the animal. So let's see if I can fix this ear. So I think it's coming out a little bit further and needs to be a little touch higher. maybe come down a little lower than I've currently got it and then there is the first of the badger stripes if you like And we've got this other one over here and then just grab a bit more paint we've got the other ear on our left the eyes are within a fairly dark patch of pigment as well so I'm not going to try to draw the eye just yet but what I'll do instead is just pick out the larger general shape which 
perhaps down a bit lower on the right. And then um, on the left, we've just got a little bit of the eye showing there. I perhaps added a touch too much there, but I think we can get away with it. Now there's a patch of dark colour on the nose as well. So we'll block that in. There's a patch of dark colour, which I think is the underside of the jaw. It's a little difficult to tell in the reference. And then the chest has this magnificent um, stripe going down it. So what I'll do is I'll kind of push against the bristles a little bit as I reach the edge of that so that I um, hopefully get a little bit of the odd frayed edge so that the yeah the stripe doesn't have too regular an edge to it. Now, as we come down here to the bit of chest by the tops of the front legs, it's really quite dark down there, so I'm kind of torn between mimicking the reality of the situation, um, which is why I'm moving on to the legs for the moment, and because I quite like this, you know, this bit of texture here, so I'm still going to leave that for the moment, I think. Let's grab a bit more of my paint off the bit more of this purple off the palette. Just dry brush some of that across. Now, although it's not quite colour accurate, I can kind of tease some of this colour across into the lighter regions to begin to suggest a bit of texture on the fleece. But let's not get too carried away with that and instead darken the knee on our right here. And that leg can disappear into the foliage. I've also got another dark knee there. And the right hand part of the lower leg is nice and dark too. And then we come to the belly, peeking out from behind this leg on the left. kind of wiggling the brush again just like I did in the sky just to give me an undulating edge on the top of this patch of dark fleece. The rear leg here is, is pretty dark as well and dark patch there And that rear leg is pretty dark too. Now there are a couple of areas where I think I could just uh, make use of this too dark yellow that I mixed up if I add a bit of the crimson and then just take it down a notch by going into that paler patch. The top of the head has a patch of kind of orangey colour to it. There's also a bit down there. Um, and then looking around, I can probably put a touch there. And that's probably about it. I'm sort of cheating a bit, but I'm going to put a little bit in there as well. Kind of 
couple of bits there too. And then we'll come in and do some highlights and things in just a second. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit more variety of colour to some of the darks. So this is just pure ultra marine blue. Same brush as before. And I'm just applying this fairly thinly. So this is going to have a double effect. It's going to um, create you know, some extra colour within the within the dark patches. And it's also going to darken those areas a bit as well. But I'm not I'm quite deliberately not covering everything I've done for this first layer of paint. I just want to make sure there are some subtle darks and lights within my shadows and also the dark patches of the fleece. I'm still being careful to leave this bit as it is because I quite like that. Um, you know, I know it's not representative of the animal, but um, I kind of, I don't know, I just think it's an interesting effect. Now, having done that, let's um, put a little bit of the tinting white into that same mixture. And that was probably a little bit too much, to be honest. So we'll grab a little bit more of the ultramarine, which I could do with refreshing on my palette. But when we look around the different parts of the animal, there are some slightly lighter blues. And, you know, sometimes I put these highlights in, in the wrong place, quite frankly. Yeah, but I do that deliberately. Again, just if I feel it's going to work for the painting. I'm just going to spray, I, I let, I forgot to say before, um, just after the last coat of paint before I added the blue, I did let the painting dry completely. So for that reason, I'm just uh, adding a bit of water with the spray bottle. So you see, if I paint onto a dry surface like this, I get this nice broken brush stroke, the kind of dry brush effect is what we call it. That creates a nice, interesting texture. But um, if I if I paint onto a wetter surface, then I get a much softer edged patch of tone and color. And all of those things, if you kind of mix them up, you can use them to suggest the texture of wool or, you know, or a number of different things, depending on what you're up to. A little bit more water there.
Now, obviously, the, the leg isn't really blue, and that came out, that bit of blue I just added to the knee there, that came out a bit darker than intended. Just wanted a hint at a bit of shadow down there, but having made that kind of mistake, I'll go with it and, and give the sheep a blue foreleg for the moment, at least. We, we may end up leaving it that way. We'll, we'll see what happens. And now uh, let's add even more of the tinting white. A little bit more water. just want to cool down some of this yellow that we've got as our underlayer. And I think that's probably enough of the blue for the moment. Well, I've now got um, some pure tinting white loaded onto a slightly older half inch flat brush. So um, because this one's a bit older, it's a bit more frayed. So my plan is to get a few jagged ed edges into the situation. So we've got some light catching the back of the sheep here. Now the there is quite a bit of light catching the, the rear end as well, but I still I still quite like that blue, I think, uh, that bit of watercolour marker that's showing through. So we'll, we'll leave that for the moment. I might, I might cover it later. We can begin to build up some highlights now. So this white is quite translucent and consequently it allows me to begin to introduce highlights in a fairly gentle way. And it still leaves some of the earlier work showing through. And then if I find that I don't like that effect, I can always cover it with some titanium white. Or if I just need to, an area to be brighter, I can do the same thing. But these translucent highlights mean that a lot of the underlying colours are going to show through. So we get a, automatically get some variety within the highlights that we're putting down. Now, continuing with the tinting white, but um, I haven't diluted this at all, and I'm now changing to 
uh, a filbert brush so it's you know, quite a bit smaller and this is just going to allow me to put some stronger highlights on and control the the brush stroke a little better so even at this stage i'm still thinking about the modeling of the animal um, so just trying to create a sense of three dimensions and so with that in mind what i'm looking to do is pick out the different planes of the overall shape of the of the body so for example where the where the leg kind of disappears into the body here it's quite curved quite convex so i'm painting in an arc as i apply these highlights up here it's a little bit flatter so i can put some flatter marks down when we come to the back again we curve the brush stroke to mimic the curvature of the back Now, I think within this patch of um, watercolour marker, I'm just going to add for now a few little white highlights. Being careful to angle the brush strokes in slightly different angles each time. And this flank needs to be quite a bit whiter as well. Okay, so I think that's enough of the tinting white for now. So next step is I want to refine my darks a little more. So I'm coming in with some pure ultramarine blue for the moment. Just adding a patch of that there. Put a little bit under that eye as well. And a touch there. And then uh, grabbing a little bit more ultramarine blue now, but I'm just adding a touch of the burnt umber to give me a very dark colour. And I want to really, you know, strengthen some of these shadows. Where they're at their darkest. So 
I've got nostrils here and here. Underneath the jaw will darken. And then down here on the underside, well, there's a bit of white left on the brush there, so we've got to be careful not to uh, do that again. But we'll, we'll darken the underside of the chest there. And adding these, you know, super dark patches to different areas will make the the purples and the blues that I put into the shadows already, the bits that I leave revealed, um, that'll make those pop more than they would have done before. I'll touch on the knees, and I think I'm going to leave that back leg. I quite like that back leg at the moment. Right, so back to uh, my original flat brush, and we'll grab a little bit of the cad yellow, a little bit of this crimson, touch of the burnt umber, a little bit more, perhaps a bit more of the red. Maybe a little bit of that blue that's left. And uh, again, I'm just going to spray the surface of the painting with water. And now I'm just squinting at my reference and I want to add some mid shadows. And that's perhaps a bit too, I mean, I'm not really copying the, the reference for, in terms of color anyway, not yet, well, certainly not exactly, but that's perhaps a bit too yellow. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, let's add a little bit more of the crimson to that mixture. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that's a little, a little more what I had in mind. So um, what I was, what I'd started to say was, I was just squinting at my reference, and I just want to add a few more mid shadows, really, just to help describe the form a little better than I have so far. Now the ear isn't really this color. Well, that, this, the color I'm putting down isn't really there at all, but I just think a little bit on the underside of the ears, but not too much, but just a little touch is going to help. Darken a little bit there, into the right of that eye. That's probably enough of that. Now in my reference, the eyes are in almost complete shadow, but um, I can use that same color using a, a round brush to just hint at the presence of an eye there on the right. And I'm going to leave the, the left hand one untouched because I, you know, in, at the angle I, it's, it's at, I don't think you'd be able to see it anyway. So still with the round brush, but coming in with a pale blue now. Just 
just a couple of highlights over the top of the nostrils. And going back to that right hand eye, I've just added a touch of yellow, not very much to that colour I used before. So we'll just lighten up part of the eye there. So there's a, just a little bit of a highlight. Mixed up a reddishish, reddishish, is that even a word? I, I'm going to go with it, a reddish um, purple brown. Just to come back in with a little line work towards the end. But I don't want to overdo this because, you know, I'm quite happy actually with how it's almost just a patchwork of colours that I've got here. But hopefully that, those, that patchwork of colours is saying sheep, badger-faced sheep in some way. Um, but there are a couple of little areas I feel I just want to add a touch of drawing to. Still with my round brush, but now I've got pure titanium white on, on the brush. And uh, I'm just going to use this to add a few very bright highlights. And so this patch of watercolour marker has definitely survived, and I quite like that. I'm less sure about the bit on the back, but, you know, it's survived this long, so we won't obliterate it completely, but um, I'll just use this fine brush to add a few highlights to just describe the shape of the back a little more. I've picked up a bit of blue on the brush there, but we'll make that work. Maybe just a dot of white in the eye. So here's a look at the finished painting. Quite a quirky depiction of this unique breed of sheep. Um, I've used unusual colours in the fleece, but in doing this, I feel I've kind of got to know an unusual subject quite well. So although this is a very, very different style to what I'll be creating for the farm illustrations, I think this is going to help me. It's going to kind of soaked up some of the features uh, of this animal. They've kind of gone into the, into the old memory bank. And uh, one of the things I'm happiest with with this painting is just the little bits I've left from the original drawing or the bits of the watercolour marker that have bled a little bit. And, you know, they certainly add a unique look to the finished painting. And I think I also achieved my goal where I've used different direction brush strokes, um, you know, in the different sections of the background to depict different textures. And it's just very lightly suggested, but it still gives a space for the animal to occupy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you'd like to see more of my work, then you can head to my website, which is mikejory.co.uk. And hopefully see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.